Hi, my name is Colin Genge from Rector Tech, and we've been involved in building duct testers since 1989. We worked on a research project with CMHC and built what I believe is one of the world's very first duct testers called the Duct Test Rig. So, what I'm about to do today is to show you our most up-to-date our latest version of duct tester, our Model 200, which incorporates everything that we've learned over the past 20 some years building duct testers. And there's a lot of very revolutionary features on this. And starting even with the case, the case is custom designed for this, you know, for this unit, fits it perfectly. So the first thing that we see in here is we see our digital gauge case, which we'll set down. And all of this information is uh, covered in our spec guide on the Model 200, which you can use and follow along. And uh, this video will help to make what's in here a little bit more real and a little bit more explanation. So inside the case, we have a very uh, generous bundle of spare tubes of all different colors. You notice there's four different colors in there. Our equipment is unique that all the connections on our equipment are color-coded. So color goes to color, which makes hookup really simple. We have a very heavy duty 25 foot power cord. And we also give you a roll of grill mask for sealing registers. And this is the duct tester itself. I'll go over some of the very unique features of the duct tester itself in a moment as soon as I talk about the gauge. So an important feature of our equipment is that it comes with some very well done user guides. There's also a series of videos that explain every step that you need to take to do any type of duct testing you would ever want to do. So let's open up this gauge and see what's inside. We've got the digital gauge, which has all the control features that you need for doing duct testing, and a unique feature, which is our umbilical connection cord, which has all of the color-coded connections you need in order to hook up to the duct tester itself. So over here we have the gauge, which has a complete keyboard that allows you to do all the functions you would ever need to do for duct testing. The color-coded connections are completed so they don't have to be made each time you do a test. And it's held down here. It connects up to the umbilical, which is the only thing that you need to hook up to the duct tester and to the ducts. Again, all the connections are color-coded. So let's take a look at some of the other components. One is that we use rechargeable batteries. So this means you're going to save several hundred dollars a year just in batteries alone. And there's a battery charger included, of course. So here we have a little bag of accessories, which include two probes and a series of connectors that allow you to do every conceivable duct test imaginable. A whole lot of T's and Y's that allow you to accommodate the use of this tube and a whole series of configurations that you're likely to run into. So now I'm going to talk about some of the features of the gauge. We've taken it out of the case so you can see it more easily. The first thing you will notice is how easy it is to see the display. Now at the same time, when you're entering data or uh, using different functions on the screen, the uh, display will change to give you a lot more information, as you can see. And that's adjustable. It's adjustable how long you have a display in large and, and then small. So on. everything on the gauge is adjustable quite easily. We can run in a whole series of different modes that will display your results according to all of the standards that are currently in use worldwide. So for duct leakage, for example, you can display it in CFM at 25 pascals or 50 pascals or any test pressure for that matter. You can also display it in CFM per square foot CFM per 100 square feet, and CFM per 1,000 square feet. Or if you prefer, you can display in metric as well. However you want to set this gauge up, you can set it up, and we have videos that show you exactly how to do it, and a couple of minutes in setup means that when you do a test, you basically turn it on, 
you take a reading and you're done. As far as controlling the gauge, we can do that in what we call a TV remote mode where we can jog it up and jog it down. We can set the speed to any percentage that we like and the speed control on this fan is linearized so that when we change the percent speed up by 50%, the pressure goes up by 50%. We can also set it in the set pressure mode. There's a controller built into the gauge which will sense the pressure in the ducts and control the speed of the fan to, to maintain any pressure that we require. The backlight can be turned on and off, of course. The setup key is the one that you use to simplify your operation to remove all of the functions that you don't need and only leave the functions that you're going to use. On the back of the gauge, you'll notice that they're all color-coded connections that match the tubing that we showed you earlier. Green, yellow, red, and blue. So our connection is always color to color. So you simply take the umbilical cord, you put the color on color, and that's all you need to know. Back here we have the battery charger. We also have a mini USB, which is for hooking up to your PC, and you can run this gauge and this fan using your computer in a completely automated fashion. This connection here uses an Ethernet style cable which can be run over any distance to control the fan speed. So we have a connection which goes from here to here which we'll show you in a moment. Other features of the gauge that you'll find handy is that it's backlit so you can see it even in the dark. So now I'm going to show you just how easy our duct tester is to use. The hardest part is probably sealing off the registers, which we've done already, and we've attached this flex duct to the main return and sealed it off as well, and taken the blue tube with the probe and put it inside one of the supplies. So typically we're going to connect this blue tube to the supply that's closest to the main supply plenum. Now the connections on the gauge are already connected, they don't have to be disconnected each time. You can if you want to, but there's no need to do that. They stay connected inside their case, and all we have to do to do the test is to make the connections on the duct tester itself. So the tubes are yellow goes to yellow, green goes to green, and the Ethernet connector goes into the control. On the gauge side, since we're testing at 25 pascals, all we have to do is to hit the set pressure key two, five, enter, and we're done. And in about five seconds, we will have a result, 150 CFM at 25 pascals. Just press exit twice to turn it off. And basically, we failed this test, unfortunately, but we've done the test very, very quickly, as you can see. Now we're gonna go and find out where the leaks are and fix them. So in our duct tester, we've got our power panel. When we plug in the cord and press the on button, it tells us that we have power going to the unit. Now it's not doing anything because I haven't turned it on yet, but this is the power panel. On the other side, we have the control panel, and you'll notice that the status light is flashing, which means it does not have a connection yet. We can control the speed manually at any time just by turning this manual control knob on. When we turn it off, it is now waiting for control signal from our gauge, which we'll show you in a moment. The connections on here are all tapered so that when you put a tube on those connections and pull it off, the tube doesn't get torn and you can make those connections hundreds if not thousands of times without affecting the, the tube. On the front of the fan, we have some low flow plates. In this case, we have the mid-range, which you would use typically for just about every duct system from about 50 to about 180 CFM, which covers just about all the tests you're going to make. We take this off, we have the open range, which is for really, really leaky duct systems or small houses. And one feature on here, which you'll probably miss, is there's a little tiny reference port on here, which allows us to do a test with a flex duct attached to either side. So we can either pressurize the ducts with this or depressurize. It's currently set up in the pressurization mode,
so that air comes in, goes into the flux duct, and pressurizes the duct systems. Most standards require pressurization. However, we find that it's much easier to depressurize ducts because it's holding the seal on the registers on instead of blowing it off. A lot of people will prefer turning the fan around and attaching this flex duct to the other side, which you can do very easily simply by removing this Velcro strap and pulling the flex duct off. Turn the fan around, attach the flex duct on the other side, and we're now ready to depressurize ducts. That's all you have to do. Let's go back to where we were before in the pressurization mode. The way this duct tester shell is made is a very unique process that allows it to be molded completely in one piece. There's no seam anywhere, there's no joins anywhere in this duct tester as you can see. It's completely molded in one piece, a very unique process that we've developed that allows us to put a ridge here that when the flex duct goes over top, it, it's held in place by this ridge and this is where the strap pulls it down on this side of the ridge. So this little bump here holds a seal around the flex duct. On the other end of this flex duct is the flange that attaches to the return and the flex duct comes off this just as easily as it did when we showed you removing the flex duct from the duct tester fan itself. So this would be attached to the return, the flex duct would be then connected, and you're ready to test. So we can control this fan either using the gauge and the control connections here on the manual control, or using a remote manual control which you can take up to 100 or even 300 feet away. So you can control the gauge in some other part of the house. This is an optional accessory. And another accessory that is included is the ability to do fully automatic control from a laptop computer. For most duct tests, it's not necessary. An important accessory is the field calibration plate, which has a calibrated hole and the calibration of this hole is marked on the sticker. All you do is to attach it to the end of the flex duct with tape and allow the duct tester to measure to check the calibration in just a few minutes. This is the remote speed control option which has an on off switch and a speed control which allows you to control the duct tester from any place in the house as much as 300 feet away if you want to just using a standard ethernet cable. Another option for tight houses is to use this duct tester fan with one of these aluminum frames and a special cloth that will allow you to test super tight houses. You can also optionally get cases of grill mask that's used to cover over supply and return registers in order to complete this test. The air current tester or smoke puffer as some people call it is an important accessory because it's the tool that helps you to locate the leaks in ducts. And this particular model is good for about a thousand puffs. It comes packed in a storage tube to protect from the somewhat corrosive smoke. And uh, when it's shipped, the smoke is in a glass vial inside and has to be broken in order to activate it. So it has a shelf life that's indefinite. So it goes in the storage tube and a special feature of the carrying case is there's a pocket either here or here that is designed specifically to carry the smoke puffer so that if any of the uh, corrosive smoke escapes it won't destroy your gauge or your computer.